Justin Johnson had taken the lead early today, but now it's 21-year-old Joaquin Neiman in front. Three under par on the back nine as we wrap things up for the second FedEx Cup playoff event here on a Sunday at the BMW Championship. Right back down to the course, Tom Wormy. John Rahm, two under for our championship. T-ball at the par three, 13th hole, 145. He doesn't like it right after contact. Hole location's front left, and he hits it well right of the hole. It's going to stay on the right side of the green and a good 30 feet away from that front left hole location for John Rahm, who is four under for the day as he plays 13. And walk while that was going on inside at number 12, so... Our leader right now playing really good golf. Him and Ron both have been playing really good golf the last hour, Earl. And then behind them, the final group, DJ, settles things down. He hits a fairway at 11, now trailing by one. And Hideki Matsuyama, another miss, and knew it right away. That's a left miss for Matsuyama, so continues to struggle hitting fairways, Tom. Adam Scott on the 13th tee box. This par three plays 145 today. One last look. At the flag stick, and that flag on top of it motionless as Scott hits his shot to a front left hole location, sent it right over top of that hole. In fact, it's probably going to be a pitch mark about four or five feet beyond the hole. One bounce, and now stopping beyond the hole and about 15 feet away for Adam Scott for birdie here at the 13th. Scott can get it back to plus one for the tournament. Tony Finau has been on a bit of a run on this back nine. Made a bunch of birdies late. He made birdies at 11, 12, 13, and 14. Hit it close at 17, couldn't make it, and just hit it inside 10 feet at 18. So he's got an opportunity to close with a birdie to shoot a five under par, 65, and get it in at minus one. At least post a number, right? Get well, it in there under par. Big picture for him. He was 29th in FedEx Cup points coming into the week right now, and even with the birdie, would uh, project to 20th so in his case making up a couple of shots for next week when it gets to stroke space scoring for the tour championship yeah great finish and a great round someone coming in at about 90 minutes would take that shot at 18 in a heartbeat you might need birdie to win this thing you absolutely might need birdie to win this thing and but i mean just i, I think more than anything, post something under par right now. Who knows what happens? These guys are trying to win a golf tournament, Earl, and if you start getting a little tentative and start making bogeys, we saw what DJ looked as clean as could be, and all of a sudden that little stumble, every one of these players could end up doing exactly the same thing. Get it in at one under and see where that finishes. And the theme the entire week, it's been tough to finish off rounds. It's 17, 16, 17, and 18. Now maybe a little more forgiving at the 18th today, there's actually been a hole out there and six birdies, but uh, 16 and 17 yes. among two of the toughest holes today. So that three-hole stretch will decide this tournament here today, Fred. Earl, the 12th hole known as Channel, 380 yards today. Bunker begins 241 out. Iron off the tee for Joaquin Neiman. Hit it 227 with his iron, leaving him a buck 55 in to a right-hand hole location. Joaquin Neiman... Bogey free. And four under. Holds the finish there. A huge pelt of a divot flies. This looks good. Lands that hole high. One big hop. My goodness, that was a trampoline hop. Finally comes to rest in that 20, 25 foot range. Downhill, left to right putt up coming for Joaquin Neiman. Savage hop on that first bounce. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was a big hop there, Fred. But that's kind of his tendency. When he gets going and gets a little adrenaline going, his lower body gets going fast, and he hits the ball very low. And with these firm greens, they're going to take some big skips. Back to Will Haskett. The left miss is returned for Hideki Matsuyama at the par 4 11. Swung it too far to the left-hand side off the tee, but did not get it too far that a tree in front of him should have much of a threat. 74 yards away, plenty of green to work with with a hole that has cut 25 paces on this green. Matsuyama, oh, it clipped a little bit of a branch, and that will dump it into the front left greenside bunker. You know, he couldn't go with a normal trajectory upstairs, but I thought he'd be okay to flight it low with some green to work with, but caught it a little bit high, caught it a limb, and it's now in the front left greenside bunker. Now from 67 yards from the right side of the fairway, Dustin Johnson, a little bit too much bat on this one. One hop skips it past the hole, and that's into the back fringe. He'll be able to put putter on it, but caught that a little bit too crisply and flew it about five yards past his intended target landing spot. Birdie effort for DJ will be the chip in variety with putter. He's outside of 14 feet here at 11. 
Tony Finau cleans it up at 18. It was a lot closer than 10 feet. It was only about two and a half. What a finish for Tony Finau. Closing birdie. He shoots a five under par, 65, and he's posted a number. Someone is going to finish under par for the week yeah. this week. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. We did it. We get someone at least one in under par, Tom Murphy. The par 3 13th hole is called Baby, but this is a man-sized birdie attempt right here for John Rahm. 45 feet away from a front left hole location, putting from the right side of this green. Rom playing very steady, four under par for the day and two under for the championship. Up the rise, now flattening out, turning to the right a little bit. Rom is watching it. He's got it in the neighborhood there from 45 feet away. Not too bad. Just a little bit of work for Rom here at the 13th to keep it minus two for the BMW championship. Back to 10, Will Haskett. It's 11 or on the missed second shot from Hideki Matsuyama. Came up right in the top of the lip of the bunker. Huge uphill stance in the fluffiest sand on this property. Matsuyama has to explode this shot off an upslope some 65, 70 feet. And he fluffed it right up out of the sand and barely cleared the lip and onto the front edge of the green. His par putt will be yardage measurement, not feet, yards. It's going to be some 25 steps from the front edge of the green to the back hole location. So you can do the math of there some 70 feet for a par putt upcoming for Hideki Matsuyama at 11. Yeah, ball just nestled down a little bit right underneath the lip. And the lip wasn't so much an issue, but it was so steep that no matter how hard he hit it, there was no place for it to go but straight up. He really had no chance to get that anywhere near more than maybe 10 or 15 feet closer to the hole. Up one now, Fred Albers. And this is a difficult putt, Earl, for Joaquin Neiman on the 12th green. 29 feet. Eight inches downhill, side hill. Want to enter the cup about the eight o'clock position. Strokes that rolling up on line. Oh, just missed. <laughs> Was that a good putt? And still it rolls out four feet or so. At least that will be coming back up the hill for Joaquin Neiman. I thought he had no chance to make that big curler. Scared the hole. Now needs to secure the par. Yeah, it scared the hole. That had everybody's attention that was out there for quite a while. That looked like it was going in. It was carrying speed, but that was helping it stay on that low line and just tickled the low edge. But now he's got a little work left to save his par, as Freddie mentioned. Well, and keep in mind now, we have a one-under in, Tony Finau, with that short putt, great birdie at 18, to shoot 65, the best round of the week. Tony Finau gets to sit in the clubhouse, and I wouldn't go anywhere right now at minus one the way this back nine has been playing, Fred. Hey, you get the feeling that Mackenzie Hughes is going to get to Atlanta or miss the tour championship uh, by just a matter of points. A birdie here would go a long way and hit a beautiful approach into the 12th green. Mackenzie Hughes just inside of 10 feet straight up the hill. Mackenzie Hughes, one two practice strokes. Now slides the head of the putter behind that ball. Oh, we got to back off. And may have been an insect flying by. A spectator without a badge. And we'll go through the pre-shot routine one more time for the Canadian. Mackenzie Hughes began the week 36th in FedEx Cup points. Currently projects just inside the top 30. Now Hughes is ready. Slowly backing through up the hill to the hole. He made it. Yes, sir. What a great three on the card for Mackenzie Hughes. A little breathing room there as we head down the stretch. I think that's huge for him and the simple fact that that way, by doing what he's done, it's making it a little harder for somebody else to push him out. I think that's what's really important. Should give him a couple of shots to play with coming in to make it to Atlanta, Will. Flags take in outside of 60 feet par effort for Hideki Matsuyama, whose T-ball missing left here has brought a big number into play. This is a challenging putt. It is very quick from front to back on this green, and there is some serious movement also from right to left. Matsuyama, long-range prayer for a par. Strokes it. With a little bit of pace, it's outside right, asking for it to giddy up and go. This puts the brakes on as it starts to turn off to the left-hand side. That's pretty good, actually. Kept falling down the slope and underneath the hole about three and a half, four feet. It is not in for bogey yet, but the damage may be minimized for Matsuyama here at 11. Yeah, I mean, it, it all started with another wayward drive. Clipped that limb and got into a really bad spot underneath the lip of that bunker and just nothing you can do. I mean... 
you can't keep continually driving the ball 10 to 15 yards off the fairway and hope to have shots. Somehow he is, though, Dennis, for three days, and he's going to drop one, but he's still right there. I mean, that's a good, really, in the end, save for bogey. Can't afford the two drop shots, but he's kind of been hanging in there, and he's probably going to do it again, Will. No, he's going to drop at least one. There will not be a shot gained for Dustin Johnson, who missed his par, or should say, missed his birdie effort from the back fringe here at the 11th. Kind of bobbled through the fringe a little bit on him and just hung on the high side. It'll be a two putt, or I should say, a one putt par, but two strokes with the putter from the fringe for Dustin Johnson. He's going to stay at minus two, and Hideki Matsuyama up next has three and a half feet of tester. Yeah, still a little work, and if he doesn't have that, then he's going to be tied with Tony Fina, who. It's nice to say in the house, no more golf to play. And with the finish that this golf course has, you mentioned, not as hard as it has been, it's still not easy. And then the pressure on a Sunday mounting, Will? I'm just glad I was right that someone would be in more than an hour early under par. Man, feels good to be right about one thing this week. Now, who's going to win this golf tournament? No idea right now. Hideki Matsuyama has to avoid a big number at 11 if he's going to be in contention. Three and a half footer strokes it to the hole. That one's fine. All right, bogey. A lot of sloppiness on that hole. Back to one under. We go to Fred. Joaquin Neiman to secure his par. Maybe four feet at the 12. Up the hill to the hole. That's in. Once again, that was center cut for Joaquin Neiman. He's had a couple of pressure par putts on this side of the golf course. He's converted every one of them. Going to the par three, 13th. Yeah, which is a par three, which there's been some birdies there today, Tom Wormy. Not between Adam Scott and John Rahm at the 13th. Adam Scott had 15 feet and just missed outside the right edge and tapped in for his par plus two for Adam Scott. John Rahm with a two putt from about 45 feet away, rolled in a three-footer to complete the three at 13. John Rahm is minus two for our tournament. So they move on. The green is clear. Let's go back there, Fred. Mackenzie Hughes coming off that birdie at the 12th on the tee at 13, known as Baby 145. Tough hole location right on top of a bunker on that left-hand side. Wind swirls from a grove of oaks that lines this fairway. Elevated green. Mackenzie tosses that high in the air, asking for it to wiggle. That whole high right-hand side gets it to hold for now in the middle of the hill. That's another makeable birdie putt upcoming for Mackenzie Hughes, 15 feet or so. It's a great shot that he hit in there, 13, named Baby. 14's named Caution. The reason why I bring that up, it's not necessarily the 14th hole. The back nine is playing 24 over par. No one's on the front, and it played 11 under, so they're playing the tougher nine to finish today, too. Fred? I love the name of this par three, Dennis Baby, because it's a little par three at 145 yards. Joaquin Neiman looking for something special. He's birdied this hole twice. This is a nice line, clears the bunker. That's going to be right of Mackenzie Hughes, and that's going to catch the hill and funnel further away. Still, that's a quality play, 20, 25 feet or so. Mackenzie Hughes is going to get a read off that putt out of Joaquin Neiman. Joaquin Neiman, four under on the round, three under for the week. He's bogey-free, playing. Then roll into the middle sector of this green. And underneath the hole and about 30 feet or so away, straight uphill to the back middle hole location for birdie for John Rom. Four under for the day for Rom. And those players, Tom, moving in and moving out. Just two moving in. One of them, our leader, Joaquin Neiman, projected to go third right now, starting the week in 31st. And Mackenzie Hughes starting 36th. He's now 27th, tied for sixth. Moving out, Adam Long started 27th, finished, or is right now projected 31st, and starting 28th and finishing, or right now projected to be 32nd, is Kevin Streelman. Season 30 in the Corn Ferry Tour continued this weekend at Victoria National Golf Club in Indiana, and they are done. The Corn Ferry Tour Championship presented by United Leasing and Finance. Brandon Wu wins it, final round, seven under par, 65 to finish at 18 under and defeat Grayson Sig by one. He finished solo second, 17 under par. Right now, Joaquin Neiman is the leader on a back nine on a Sunday south of Chicago, Fred. Joaquin Neiman with a 30-foot birdie opportunity at our par 3, 13. Sends that up the hill, needs the curve to the right. Approaching the hole, didn't hit it. Leaves that short again, just shy of the cup, and he will cautiously put down a mark. But that should result in a two-putt par for Joaquin Neiman, keeping him bogey-free, four under today, and three under for the week. And back to Will Haskett. 
We're Dustin Johnson and Hideki Matsuyama, both with irons, as the entire field has done this week at Channel, the short 380-yard par 4 12th hole. There's a creek that runs in at about 290, but the players don't even try and get near that creek because of a bunker that really pinches the fairway. So everybody's been playing short and then trying to find a way to hit a middle to short iron in from distance out. Dustin Johnson, a long ways back, 176, plays into a middle right hole location. Very challenging to get this close. He's looking for something a little bit left of the hole. This is on a good line, but it takes a huge kick. This is going to catapult all the way to the back edge of the green. I think Fred called it a trampoline bounce earlier for Joaquin Neiman at this green. Same thing, and Dustin Johnson cannot believe how high that ball bounced. It's on the back edge of the green, some 35 feet away for birdie. Well, that looks like it almost hit a sprinkler head. That was ridiculous how big of a hop it took. And he is like looking at like, what just happened there? There's no way that visual should have been what it was when I saw that ball coming down. Dennis, I was talking about a chance for some of these players to make history. In the case of Joaquin Neiman, 21 years old, he turns 22 early November. He would be, if he holds on, the youngest winner ever of a FedEx Cup playoffs event. Jordan Spieth holds that honor right now. He was 22 when he won the Tour Championship in 2015, Will. Former number one am in the world. There was a lot of hype around him. We forget how young he is. Same can be said for Hideki Matsuyama. He was the next when he was an amateur player and has lived up to those expectations as a professional. Matsuyama, crisp contact as always. That from 162, fading it nicely next to the hole. That takes a little bit more of a controlled bounce forward and then puts on the brakes. Maybe just outside of 20 feet for Matsuyama. Needs a bounce back birdie here at 12. 13th hole now to Fred. Mackenzie Hughes trying to rock the baby and put it to within 13 feet of the cup at the par 3 13th hole, known as Baby. This would be back-to-back -back birdies and would take him to one under for the week. Uphill, he can get this to the hole. Back through, rolling up now at the edge of the cup, and he just slides by. Oh, that was a great look and a nice putt out of Mackenzie Hughes. A tap in par keeps him even for the week through 13. That was such a good effort. How does that ball not just fall slightly to the left? That's all it's got to do. Move to the front portion of the green just ever so slightly. That would have been huge for me, for McKenzie right there. Now to Tom Wormy. This is going to be a long-distance journey for Adam Scott. His ball hit about 15 feet on this green, and then because of the way the green pitches towards the front, it rolled right to the very front edge. If he can somehow make this from 69 feet away to a back left hole location, he projects to 30th in FedEx Cup points, rolls it up the slope 10 feet away, turning left for Scott while he gave it a great run with the long putter. And that one comes up short and left by about a couple of feet. That's very well calculated from 69 feet away and should be a forward 14 for Adam Scott and plus two. Man, he's played some good golf today. It's been the putter that's let him down. He's been putting pretty well, and he hasn't hit bad putts today. Just can't get anything to fall. It's solo bogey. Killing him. All it takes is one, and that's what he needs right now, according to the projections. Adam Scott is going to need a birdie coming in. Needs to finish tied for 10th or higher coming into the week. 38th in FedEx Cup points right now. Not quite enough. Ranks number 33. Yeah, and looking at the projections, I just saw looking at Ben on. He's right below Adam Scott, one shot behind him. He shot a closing 68. How about a pair of 68s on the weekend? But he's got nothing he can do about it, and right now he's projected at 34th. To Tom Wormy. John Rahm shot 66 yesterday. Should have been a 65. You've heard the story about picking up the golf ball without marking it. No problem along those lines today, and right now he's four under par for the final round. 31 feet up the slope to a back left hole location here at the 14th for birdie for Rom to get it to three under and five under for the day. Widens the stance just a little bit. Slight forward press. Knocks that one up the slope. Turning left and it doesn't have enough. And it comes up short and left inside of two feet away from 31 feet away for John Rom. So just a short putt for his four that he'll take care of at the 14th, and John Rahm is minus two. Mm. That's just needs to start stringing something together. He's starting to run out of holes, Earl. That's the problem yeah. with these guys. I hate to bring it up, too, right now for John Rahm. That hiccup at number five, that's a difference for him right now. And sharing the lead, it could cost him the golf tournament this weekend. Oh, man, I... <laughs> 
I'm hoping he doesn't think back to that. I mean, I know I get it, but it was yesterday. Hopefully he doesn't think about it too much. 14th hole now. Joaquin Neiman off the tee with a fairway medal. Is He's got the lead at three under par. Plays it, cuts it right into the fairway. That's a good tee shot for Neiman. Boy, he has been so good today. Four under on the front nine. All pars in the back nine. And who knows it. That's all it may take today to hang on for the win. Neiman in great shape as he tries to bring it home in the lead, Will. With the final group on the golf course needing to maybe make a birdie or two to give themselves comfort, cushion, or reel in the leader over the next you know, 90 minutes or so. Dustin Johnson has worked with his brother Austin on the read of a very difficult putt from the backside of the green here at 12. There's a gentleman walking down the cart path. One of the marshals finally get his attention to stop in the background of the through vision line for Dustin Johnson. He's aiming some 18, 24 inches outside left. It is fast from the back edge of the screen, and it will put the blinker on and go to the right-hand side. Down the hill he sends it. It is outside left. Here comes the right cut. It's cutting underneath the hole, but again, masterful on the touch, on the speed down the slope for Dustin Johnson. He could one-hand that, backhand it, however he wants to do it. It's only a couple of inches away. Two-putt par for DJ, two under, heading to 13. Something that's been such an improvement over the last little bit. I mean, it's, his putting has definitely improved. When he won earlier this year, it was with a completely different putter. And all of a sudden, he comes back, and that putter's disappeared. It's like, wow. Doesn't take long for you to change putters, I guess. Well, winning was not enough to keep that one in the bag? Well, you know, it's been interesting with him. He has kind of fought the putter in recent, what, season, season and a half, and has been changing putters. What, he changes putting stroke midway through a round at one point. But it's certainly been one of the strengths of many for him the last couple of weeks in the last month, month and a half or so, Will. And speaking of putting switches, Hideki Matsuyama's finally gone to some putting instruction over the last year or so just to try and tidy up the one thing that's probably held him back from being the top player in the sport. Top five ball striker, but routinely ranks in the very, very bottom quarter of the PGA Tour in putting. 22 feet for a birdie at 12 for Matsuyama. Sunglasses on the back of the hat with high clouds bathing the golf course in shadows. Birdie putt is down the slope. It's outside left. It needs to go on another one that was probably made with the right amount of pace, but just wiggled away to the right-hand side. Tap in par as well for Matsuyama, who's one under as we head to baby the bar 13th. It's interesting when you see a guy like Hideki Matsuyama, who's got that very deliberate, slow backswing and the pause and everything, and then very quick through. It's hard to mimic that kind of pace and a stroke, and he's always... To me, personally, it looked like he's trying to find his rhythm on the green with the putter. He's got his own rhythm hitting golf shots, but that's not a rhythm that you can really have on the greens and be successful. So he's had to try to find it, and he's looking pretty good. There, there seems to be a constant marriage in the backstroke and the follow stroke right now for Hideki, and he is putting better right now, no question. Certainly the shorter ones have looked really solid for him this week, and he's been mentally tough hanging in this thing. And still in it on a Sunday, Fred. The 14th hole known as caution, and you need some caution off the tee. It's 336 through the fairway, so players lay up with three woods. That's exactly what Joaquin Neiman did, leaving him 181 yards to the flagstick. Flagstick in the very back of this green, 23 on. The green's only 27 deep. This green has as much slope as any on the golf course from back to front. Joaquin Neiman has selected his iron and is ready to play. The fairway sits well below the level of the green, a steep hill that you come up. And Joaquin Neiman plays away, trying to work a cutter in here, starts out on the left-hand side, that's not coming back. That is over the bunker, over the green, may have deflected off a group of marshals and not gone all the way down into the woods. That may be a lucky break upcoming for Joaquin Neiman, but has missed the green out here. Yeah, the ball was sitting down in an older divot. I don't know if the, the, the lie itself caused that ball to shoot as far left as it did, but when you get in lies like that, you really got to try not to curve the ball. And the divot itself wasn't a real big one. It was near the front of it, so he was able to get on the back of the ball. But the problem is it's such a tight little divot 
that he might have got the heel to grab, and that's what pulled it left. Neiman was the first man out of the top 30 to start the week. He is first on the leaderboard now in the back nine. Will? Tucked over on the left-hand side of the bunker, Dustin Johnson trying to find the distance from 145 at the par 3 13th. But this is lost out to the right-hand side. Just does carry the bunker, but the spin is going to pull this one farther and farther away right. It's going to catch a slope. It's going to go all the way down to the low right portion of this green. And that was just not a finished swing by Dustin Johnson. Birdie putt will be up over a steep slope. It's outside of 50 feet for DJ here at 13. He's really testing that putter for the long-range putt you know, tap-ins, and that, that one's going to have his hands full right there because the pace that he's got to hit it on fast screens is really uncomfortable to hit something that hard. Right back to Will again. 145, typically a number that Hideki Matsuyama would lick his chops. Trying to carry it, though, just about 138 over a bunker. He's a hoist it way up into the air if you have a chance of getting it close to this very firm green up ahead at 13. Matsuyama, just right of the hole, sends it into the sky. It's staying there. This has got plenty of distance on it as well. Lands, hole high right, gathers some spin, needs to stop there, stop there, golf ball. It's going to catch the same ridge as Dustin Johnson's golf ball that's still working away. That will be on the front right portion of the green as well, and both of these players are in danger of a three-putt here at 13. And right now, up ahead of them, Joaquin Neiman's lead is in danger. Missed the green at 14, way over the green. So he's going to have to get up and down to hang on to the lead by just a slim shot, three under par, as we continue our PGA Tour radio coverage on the back nine Sunday, penultimate event of the FedEx Cup playoffs at the BMW Championship. Fortunate his ball hit a chair or it would have gone... Yeah, probably another 10, 15 yards away into really deep rough. As it is, his ball is sitting down, does not have much green to work with. For his third shot into the par 4, 14th hole, drove into a divot, turned the ball over on the approach. Tries to play a little flopper onto the green, needs for that to chase. It's not going to get up there. Oh, goodness, Joaquin Neiman now has a long par putt awaiting him at the par four, 14th hole. He has a clean card, but is hard pressed to keep that card clean after that chip. Yeah, that ball, he, he did get a great break, Freddie. You called it perfectly. He hit that char, chair dead square and stopped basically right in his tracks, and it was going to chase down that hill and be a much farther away from the hole than where it was. To Will Haskett now 13. Just inside 50 feet, an incredibly slow putt for Hideki Matsuyama early up a ridge that will then shoot the ball from left to right as it gets to the high side of the screen on the left edge. Have to give this plenty of pace, but not whack it all the way through. This one needs to go as it comes up the slope, and he didn't hit it. Well, I don't even know if he, hit, he may have hit that fat, maybe hit the ground behind the ball. It's outside 12 feet still for Hideki Matsuyama to avoid a three wiggle here at 13. He went to the putter to wipe the face like he got a little something between the, the ball and the club face there when he tried to hit that putt. It's just so slow, and you said it perfectly, Will. It is such a slow putt, and it's tough because you don't want to go smashing it because what you've got if you hit it past the hole is really quick coming back on the other side. Right back to Will again. 47 feet, very slow, up a huge ridge for Dustin Johnson's birdie at 13. Then it will cut away hard to the right-hand side, sends it up that ridge. Now here comes the right-hand turn on the high side. He flexes the body. Now and put the brakes on, and that was a beautiful judge of the pace from DJ. That will be as easy of a two-putt par as you will see from 47 feet, carrying some elevation. Dustin's not going to have to mark that ball. Two-putt par, he stays two under here at 13. Well, that's really well done right there to make an easy par of it. Much better effort and opportunity than what uh, than what Hideki Matsuyama did with his putt. Yeah, a lot more work for Matsuyama here, Will. Still 11 feet for Hideki Matsuyama here at 13. Cutting putt left to right. It's still slow. He had to have learned the lesson for leaving it so short the first time around. Stands over it, playing some foot of break on the outside left side cutting it back in and it catches the high side wow that builds a little something heading to 14 two putt par he stays one under there's nothing we can say that he hasn't had some intestinal fortitude this week man he is hung in there when he hasn't been really sharp on any cylinder other than getting the ball up and down around the greens and that punter came through again so you know it's looking better for Matsuyama and certainly 
you know, for him, he needs it right now because he's just been fighting his way through three tough days on the course and still one of the handful who has a chance to win this tournament as he is staying in a tie for fourth at one under. That's two behind Joaquin Neiman for now, Fred. Well, there's a debate among members what is the signature hole here at Olympia Fields Country Club. Some say Ararat, the par four third hole. Others say it is 14, known as Caution, the difficult par four. Very difficult for Mackenzie Hughes. Missed the fairway, missed the green, did not hit a good chip, ended up making bogey. The Canadian back to even in the round and one over for the week. Once again, began play 36 in FedEx Cup points. Still projects inside the top 30, but very little wiggle room remaining for Mackenzie Hughes on the last four holes of this final round. Joaquin Neiman, fortunate in that his approach hit a chair and prevented the ball going into the really deep rough and further away, but still was a tough chip that he left 18 feet shy of the cup to remain bogey-free and three under for the week. Neiman rolls that up, needs to turn hard to the right-hand side and does not do it. There's the first bogey of this final round for Joaquin Neiman. Gives one back, three under on the day. Now two under for the week with four to play. Joaquin Neiman. On the signature hole on the golf course, I'm going to give my vote to 14 for the simple fact of it just really fits in there. I love the third hole, but it's a little more open. The tightness of 14 and where the creek kind of runs through, it's just a beautiful par four. Dustin Johnson now, ball off the tee at 14. Good save, two putt for him at 13. This one is Aaron left, and this hops off the fairway and into the primary rough. So, boy, ever since number eight missing that green, it's been shaky for DJ, Tom Wormy. Third shot for John Rahm at the 15th. It's a par five. 199 from the fairway. He avoided disaster as his ball hit a tree, but came down in play, and he punched it to this point. 199 on the third shot. Our location today is back right. up. Just three paces from the right edge. What a shot by Rom. Hits underneath the hole, off to the left. Now takes a bounce and rolls, and it's about 10 feet away at most. What a shot from 199 after getting a huge break. Should John Rom go on to win this tournament, he will reflect back on that tee ball that hit a tree but stayed in play at 15. Yeah, he hit it right, so did Adam Scott. Adam's ball did not kick out. His did kick out, and then he plays a smart shot, doesn't be overly aggressive, and hits a great shot into the green. Wow. Uh, you didn't think with that swing off the tee that he was going to be having any kind of an opportunity to make a birdie there at the par five. Well, and that could be a birdie for the outright lead, Tom Wormy. Yeah, the John Robb shot was outside of 215 yards away. Adam Scott has 199, but this is his fourth. And the whole location back right, down breeze for Adam Scott. As Dennis articulated, his shot off the tee was in the penalty area. He didn't like this one. The right hand came off the club immediately. It's long and left with his fourth. It's a long putt, maybe 45 feet coming out of the fringe to a right-hand hole location and straight downhill for the par for Adam Scott here at the 15th in a little bit of trouble. It looked like John Rahm might be there, but hits it inside 10 feet. So part of a three-way tie with Joaquin Neiman and Dustin Johnson. John Rahm's going to have a putt for the outright lead late on a Sunday as we continue coverage of the BMW Championship and the season-long points race for the FedEx Cup on PGA Tour Radio. Out from 30 feet above the ground. It was a golf god in there that might have thrown it out, Tom Wormy. Adam Scott for par at the 15th out of the fringe, long and left, 48 feet away, down the slope, 10 feet to go, going towards the hole but missing outside the right edge with the flagstick in and rolling past at least five feet or so for Adam Scott. That was a bit at par. Remember, the tee ball was in the penalty area right and had to take a drop, so that'll be a bogey putt here for Adam Scott at 15. And back to Will. That 11-foot par putt by Hideki Matsuyama on 13 kept him in this golf tournament, no doubt about it. And from the left side of the fairway up the hill, just inside of 170 yards, Matsuyama taking dead aim. A little quick through this swing. This is out to the right, trying to draw back. It's going to carry the bunker down the right-hand side, but land softly with some spin. And that will be a very slow and very long birdie. But it's outside of 35, maybe even outside of 40 feet for Matsuyama here at 14. Yeah, not the best play for him. He really needed to try to get something close to the hole from the fairway and couldn't pull it off. 
Well, we have a three-way tie for the lead and three players battling to win this second FedEx Cup playoff event down the stretch, Tom Wormy. For birdie at the 15th, for John Rahm, nine and a half feet away from minus three. Out to the left, back to the right, into the middle, and a fist pump. Waist high with the right hand. Double fist pump. John Rahm saving the day with that shot from 218 from the fairway. He cashes it in. Minus three for Rahm and five under for the day. Wow, he birdied both the par fives, but two totally different ways to make those birdies there. He got a very fortunate break and to get it up and down from outside 210 yards. Well done for John Rahm. And now for Dustin Johnson, one back again. He's missed another green, Will. And a delicate chip shot it is just off the back left portion of this 14th green. Lower lofted wedge, scoots it on to the surface. This scoots forward on the left-hand side, asking for it to come back right. Just kind of hangs up there on a ridge. And that does not get inside the circle of friendship by any stretch of the imagination. That is seven feet, eight feet still above the cup for Dustin Johnson. May have just scooted left on the contact. That will be a slippery par putt upcoming for DJ, who could lose ground at minus two. Yeah, that was not a very good chip shot. But if they're all lie dependent, and that ball was just kind of sitting in a little bit of a nest, and you knew you're going to catch some club face with grass on the golf ball, and, and he just got a little too much grass between the ball and the club face. You're listening to exclusive coverage of the BMW Championship, the penultimate event of the FedEx Cup playoffs from Olympia Fields Country Club in suburban Chicago, Illinois. And as we do at the top and bottom of every hour in our live play-by-play coverage, time now for a leaderboard update presented by Titleist. Once again, it's a leaderboard full of players trusting Titleist with 71% of the field relying on the speed, precision, and consistency of the Pro V1 and Pro V1X. Titleist, the number one ball in golf. And John Rahm has just taken the lead with a birdie at 15, three holes to play for Rahm, three under for the week, one up on Joaquin Neiman and Dustin Johnson, who are tied for second now, minus two, Will. Trying to get to that number is Hideki Matsuyama from 48 feet away. Huge putt, kept some momentum going on the back of the last hole, but this is certainly one you don't expect to make. Tons of break from right to left. Matsuyama looks, oh, he's looking some flag stick length almost outside right that's how much turn there is in this putt sends it way out to the right hand side now asking for it to break sharply to the left it's trying to come back left but it just doesn't he overread way too much break into that putt and blasted it a little bit as well so that still with work to do for Hideki Makatayama here at 14 he's tied for four two back with Tony Finau who's in at one under had the round of the week 65 early today but now with Rom five under, he's in the lead by one at three under. So even par three back, Jason Kokrak, Matthew Fitzpatrick, Brendan Todd, Sebastian Munoz, that's a tie for six. And Mackenzie Hughes, the only player left at plus one, tenth by himself, four off the lead. And Earl, not a whole lot going on the movement in and out. Joaquin Neiman now currently tied for second. He's going to project to go from 31 to 10. From 36 to 28, Mackenzie Hughes, and he is inside by 35 points. Adam Long. Started 27th, now 31st, and starting 28th and moving to 32nd is Kevin Streelman on the outs. Now with John Rahm in front, with the lead, a win and 1,500 FedEx Cup points would vault Rahm from 9th to 2nd in FedEx Cup points. Looking like no matter how this thing finishes today, DJ Dustin Johnson is going to be the leader going into the Tour Championship. He'd love to come back here, though, and cap off a second straight win. Tom Wormy? Or we know that John Rahm made that nine and a half footer at the 15th to get the three under. Well, Adam Scott missed his six foot bogey putt. So that's a double bogey for Scott. So he goes from plus two to plus four for the championship. John Rahm has hit his tee shot at the par 316, playing 217. Hold location back left, and John's, John Rahm sent his ball to the back middle and about 30 feet away from that hole location, putting for birdie at 16 for Rahm. Let's go to Will. Still six feet for Hideki Matsuyama. He is just testing and tempting fate right now with these potential three putts. Up the hill, it'll move from right to left. It is slow, has to keep the pace up on this par putt for Matsuyama, protecting one under par. Matsuyama strokes it outside right, turns it over left, and made it. Okay, it's a two-putt par for Matsuyama, just trying to hang around at one under par. It's a good putt right there, man. You're, you're 
Saying it absolutely perfect, Will. He's testing and tempting fate right now, but the putter has been coming through for him this week. So at least that portion of his game is really starting to get solid. If he can tighten it up, could be a nice run next week. All right, huge par saver for DJ to stay one back, Will. Five and a half feet early, it cuts from left to right. I would expect this to be struck pretty firmly, maybe just outside the left edge. Strokes the butt outside left, cutting it right, and center cut again. Boy, just to have the confidence in that putter and rely on it, DJ saves his par. And now the tee shot at 15 in the entire hole really looms large in the complexity of this tournament. Par 5 coming up. DJ heads to it at minus 2. Yes, that uh, par 5 does your last best chance for birdie coming in, Fred Albers. Joaquin Neiman with a huge break when his ball ricocheted off a tree back into the fairway, 296 out. His second shot at the par 5, 15th. And he rolls the dice again from 296. Hits fairway wood. Has to hit a bait cutter. This headed out to the left-hand side. Here comes the fade. Back in. Oh, that's well played. Well played. He's in the right-hand, left-hand portion of the fairway to a right-hand hole location. Joaquin Neiman rolled the dice and won on that shot. Yeah, it's a really good leave right there. Remember, Tiger hit that great little cut five wood on this same hole back in the U.S. Open. He hit it right of the hole to the front right hole location. One of the best shots he said he's ever hit in competitive golf, and he hit a few of them. Yeah, what a break for Neiman, though. I mean, a ball that was gone. I mean, it was gone, 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 and it came back and stayed aggressive here, which he's been doing today, and, you know, one of the guys that needs it. Uh, the play is way inside the top third. He's still potent obviously potentially going to do that with a tie for second. And the only other one in right alongside of him in that group, Mackenzie Hughes, Will Haskett. Penalty area has come into play and has been a big part of the story of this golf tournament on the right-hand side at Wilderness, the par 5, 15th. That's because the wind is now out of the left. Dustin Johnson leans on this driver. Now the wind starts to push it a little bit down the right hand side, but that's just right of the bunkers and mashed. That takes a huge kick in the fairway, and that is in go zone for Dustin Johnson here at 15. Can't ask for a better tee ball for a guy. When the wind's out of the left and you like to cut it, and there's trouble right, it can be very uncomfortable and very unsettling, and he just stripes it right there at 15, and he needed that badly. Up further ahead to the green there again, Fred Albers. It's one thing to receive a good break. It's yet another to take advantage of it. Joaquin Neiman, fortunate his ball ricocheted off a tree back into the fairway at the par 5, 15th off his drive. Then a bold second play leaves him just 38 yards in for his third. Hits a low skipper. Now trying to take the slope and run down toward the flag stick. That's exactly what it's going to do. That's going to come to rest maybe three, four feet away. What a hole for Joaquin Neiman. He has that for birdie and three under. How about that? Not only would it be a bounce back, but it would be a gifted bounce back. And as he mentioned, you get the break, but are you going to take an advantage of it? He's got a great opportunity to take advantage of that break. Trying to catch John Rahm in the lead, but Rahm up ahead trying not to let that happen, Tom Wormy. 30 feet for birdie for John Rahm. His ball back right, hole location back left. It'll come up over a ridge and then try to get to his left. Rahm with the stroke, watches it escalate up the ridge, now come down and turn left to the hole for Rahm and it's in John Rahm in the middle and the big fist bump with the right hand, back to back birdies at 15 and 16, John Rahm minus 4 How big is this run for John Rahm on the back 9? Not only did that go in, catch a little bit of the edge but it had some pace on it, that, if that lift out it might have gone 6 or 7 feet by but it's in the bottom of the hole. Four birdies on this back nine, and John Rahm trying to take some control of this event. Well, he is right now, and doing what he needs to do down the stretch in a you know, tough finish at Olympia Fields. Gets the birdie you need at the par five, and then backs it up with another one. And John Rahm, four now in the driver's seat, trying to you know put the memories of that hiccup, that picking up the ball and having to take a penalty shot back at five yesterday behind them, hoping that doesn't cost them the golf tournament right now. Not looking like it will, Fred. 
Mackenzie Hughes not going to win, but he is trying to get to Atlanta. 36 in FedEx Cup points. Here's a 23-footer for birdie at the 15. Down the hill, curving to the right. Now curving up toward the hole. Not going to go in for Mackenzie Hughes. Slaps the face of that putter. He currently projects at 28, but once again, those standings very volatile. The tap in from a foot away, short of the hole for Mackenzie Hughes. All right. He's in, he's in a good spot, though, man. Make some pars coming in. There's not a whole lot going on by the other golfers that can do a whole lot. You can kind of take care of your own business right now. Just play solid coming in, and you've got yourself a ticket to East Lake in Atlanta. Yeah, now your job, though, is tough because you're going to have to catch a red-hot Rom, John Rom, Six under on the round today, which is crazy considering the scores and the toughness that we saw early. But Sunday has been a little more forgiving, Fred. Four and a half feet for Joaquin Neiman for a bounce back birdie. Can't help but notice the huge leaderboard just to the left of this green. They have already posted the birdie out of John Rahm. But Joaquin Neiman can do nothing about that. The only thing he can do is make this birdie putt. And what a birdie it would be after a wayward drive, a fortunate ricochet back into the fairway, then a gutsy faded three wood to within 38 yards, and a superb chip to four and a half feet. A bounce back birdie would take him to three under par for the week and four under in the round. If there's any movement here, it should move slightly to the left hand side. Slightly uphill. Joaquin Neiman, now ready. Little fidgety with the feet. Looks down the line, forward press, back through, rolling up and missed it. Ah, cheese and crackers. Joaquin Neiman, a very disappointing par. That may be opportunity sliding by. Oh, my goodness, what a great opportunity there to get that bounce back early. Birdie and couldn't get it to go down. And John Rahm is 10 under par for the weekend. Yeah, I was going to get to that, <laughs> Dennis. He shot 75 in the opening round. Then in round two, shot a 1 over 71 and climbed 12 spots with that round then 66 yesterday working on at least a 65 today so that's the quick turnaround for him and that's what's possibly going to get it done you'd have to go back to 2007 for a player to win a non-major on the pga tour with an opening round 75 or worse mark kalkavecchia innisbrook back in 2007 rom may do it today let's go back to will I was behind his group the entire day on Friday, Earl, and he was running really hot. And, well, that's the M.O. of his game, but grounded himself, and now look at what has happened. Got some guys trying to chase him down in the final group. Two great tee balls here at 15. Hideki Matsuyama going for the green first. Has 252 yards from the right side of the fairway to a back right hole location. Have to promote a little bit of a fade and chase this one up from this distance if you're Hideki. Cannot land this on the green. 250 out. Starts this one at the middle of the green, but it's starting to leak a little bit right. Does it have enough to carry the right bunker? Well, it carries the left bunker, and that will hop over the back left portion of the green. Wow, he carried that about 240 yards down the left-hand side. It'll be a chip from there for Hideki. Meanwhile, Dustin Johnson hit it 366 off the tee here. The longest tee shot of the day has 240 yards in. Gust of wind out of the left as he makes contact with this one towards the middle of the green, trying to promote a high fade. This ball lands on the front left portion of the green, softly kicks forward. That's going to scoot up the whole high left, and the eagle putt for DJ will be inside 30 feet. Unlike Rom, he's playing the par fives almost identically. Bombs it off the tee and puts a ball in the green and giving himself yet another eagle look. The leader, Rom, off the tee at 17, taking that driver and seems to like it. Fairly quick to pick up the tee with a two-shot lead. Bombs it up the right-hand side. That'll chase to the middle of the fairway. So, John Rom, great shape at 17, trying to bring in what could be the round of the week. Five under par and possibly his first win in the FedEx Cup playoffs. And very gutsy move there. You got a penalty area on the right-hand side there that a lot of players have found. So by taking driver out, you brought that into play a little more, and he piped it right down the middle at 17. He's played well in this event before. Last year tied for fifth, also tied for fifth in 2017 at the BMW Championship in front right now. And uh, winner of the Memorial 
Great tournament excellent. presented by Nationwide. He's working on possibly his first multiple win season on the PGA Tour so far in his career. Fred? Uh, Earl, I'm still surprised that Joaquin missed that birdie putt from four and a half feet at the 15th. It was uphill. He had just seen the exact break as the ball ran by the hole with his chip. Uh, just maybe a little bit of a flinch. That's how tournaments are won and lost. Got to clear the memory bank here. You still have three holes to play. Victory still within his grasp, but no margin of error for the young Joaquin Neiman. Jacko on the tee at our par three. 16th hole, known as the pool, playing 217. I think a difficult hole location. 19 on, just four paces off the left-hand side with that big white bunker on the left-hand side looking like a catcher's mitt to snare the errant hit. And Joaquin Neiman plays away. This is an elevated tee box. Comes in short. Now the big hop. This is going to be good. This is up by the hole. Settle down. Settle down. Ten feet by. Finally comes to halt just in the fringe. Let's call it 15 feet. He can make that. Absolutely he can make that putt right there. No question. That ball just missed the hole on the left-hand side by about a foot. And it trickled to the back. So it's going to be a putt that's actually... Even though he's on the back side of the green, it's going to be a putt that he can be pretty aggressive with. It's not going to be that fast going down the hill, and it's a putt that I really do think he's going to need to make. Well, some big putts coming up here, not only uh, for him, if he gives himself a chance for birdie back at 15, DJ just outside 30 feet, two great shots to hit that green and give himself a decent look at an eagle that could tie for the lead for Dustin Johnson in 60 seconds. Back of the green, and now with his caddy, Shota Hayavuchi. They're talking over exactly what this eagle chip from 46 feet is going to do. Best side holding its line, holding its line, tracking underneath the cup, and just lacked about a foot of pace to go down. Well, as he did on the first, a two-putt birdie at the second par five on the property, and Johnson moves it back to minus three, heading to 16. And just more importantly, one back now, and that's really the key. I mean, that was a great opportunity right there for him, and he played that par five as well as you could play it. I could not believe how soft that five iron landed on the green and only released about 25 feet. Down to the final three holes here on a Sunday, Fred Albers. Joaquin Neiman trying to snake home a 17-foot deuce at our par three 16th hole to get it to three under par. Rolls this up, fading to the right. Now at the edge, just clips the edge and doesn't go. That's going to be a par for Joaquin Neiman. He needed that one. He really needed that one right there. Gave himself a great opportunity. That ball landed into the green and really released hard. And John Rahm got a tough putt at 17, but what is it about him and penalties? Remember what happened at Memorial there with the ball moving when he was over that chip shot? Had no idea what was going on, still went on to win. Then he had this weird one where he picked his ball up without putting a coin down yesterday on the fifth hole. Boy, that one different circumstances. He had a big lead Sunday, and all it cost him was the amount of shots that he won by in the end. I mean, that one yesterday, just picking up the ball in the green without marking it. I mean, one the, the, a world number one player did that. I mean, it can happen to anybody. And it, you know, still, we'll see what, what happens. You just hope it doesn't cost him a win, but... Crazy stuff happening this week, Will. Dustin Johnson on the tee at the par 3 16th. He's actually played this difficult closing stretch of the golf course, 16, 17, and 18, in one under par this week. But the 16th has not been the hole that has been kind to DJ. Bogey's in rounds 1 and 2 here at the pool, which has been the fifth most difficult hole. 217 yards, back left hole location. It plays 10 yards downhill as DJ strides into it. Very interesting upcoming half an hour or so to see how aggressive DJ chooses to play and if he's going to need to play aggressive. Tee shot is airborne down the hill. Wind is trying to hold up the fade for DJ as it comes down and needs to go on the front right portion of the green. Hops a little bit forward. That's safely on the putting surface, but a little ways away from home. It's outside at 25 feet for birdie. Now up ahead, Tom Wormy. John Rahm for birdie at the 17th for three in a row. 26 feet away for Rom, putting to a front left toe location from beyond it and off to the left. Settles in to this birdie putt. If it falls for John Rom, he gets the minus five for the championship. Halfway there, needs to continue to roll. It's going to come up just a little bit short, and 
it was online. He takes a big swing of the putter. Just needed a little more juice, a little more energy. He'll walk up and tap it in from just a few inches away. That's a rock-solid par at the 17th. That's what you want. So birdies at 15 and 16 a par at 17 for Rom, minus 4 and 6 under for the day. Really a perfect line that he hit that just lacked a little pace. So that went a foot and a half by. It would have gone right in the middle. Let's get back to the par 3 16th. Will? Seven iron on high for Hideki Matsuyama off the birdie. Up and down from 15. Sends it into the sky. Huge follow through. Divot flying in the direction of the green. Ball landing just short of the hole. Now skips forward hard to the left-hand side. That will go down the back slope of the green and nestle into the heavy rough. Landed it on that back shelf, and these greens still firm enough that that completely repels a six iron from Hideki, and they'll have to rely on that wizardry around the greens to get up and down. That nestled, too, at the base of the slope on the back of this green. Going to be difficult from there to stay two back. Dustin Johnson put one on the green. 30 feet coming up for DJ at 16 to tie for the lead to catch John Rom late. One to play for Rom, four under and in the lead by one. As we continue coverage from Olympia Fields in the final round of the BMW Championship. I walk alone. E at the 18th, 498, dog leg left, and it looks like he's going to try to hit a big bomb over the top of the tree at the corner of the dog leg, and he is quick to pick up the tee. This looks absolutely perfect. He's not even watching it. That is a really good drive that he's hit up the left-hand side of the fairway, running to the right side, and that is absolutely perfect. Ideal in the fairway for Rom on the 18th. Let's go to the 16th, Will. Dennis, thank you. Hideki Matsuyama is going to need a couple of birdies, it seems like, coming in. If he's going to get one at 16, it's going to be the chip-in variety below the surface of the green. Wedge face wide open. Going to flop it up, let it release down to the hole. Matsuyama underneath it. Good contact onto the green. Outside left, trying to cut it back right. And just over-borrowed on that left side. And that one is not in the hole yet. Four and a half, five feet for Hideki to stay at minus two. No, that's a tricky little area right there. It's a really flat-looking putt that's going to be a putt that you want to play outside the hole, but I think it's going to be a putt that's going to be a little straighter than it looked. Rob's looked like he was going in the middle, and it just straightened out and caught the lip. He's been uh, solid with that, though, when he needs to be uh, this weekend, and you, you got to think that's a must for Matsuyama now to stay within two. Rom in great shape. Bomb off the tee at 18, and... Dustin Johnson a chance, not a close look, but a chance for Birdie to tie it up here at 16. His putt is going to be outside 30 feet to tie it up at four under. Yeah, and it's a putt that's through the shadows. It's going to make it really, really tough to read. Him and Austin are going through all the possibilities there, trying to find out what's going on with this hole. Uh, Austin has become a great reader of greens. They, they've really worked well together, his brother and his caddy figure out what's going on. I know that DJ's got to hit it on the line, but if you're getting good ones and you're hitting it on your intended lines, that makes you a good putter. <laughs> that's what yeah. makes a great putter. Well, and he's, you know, that's been just part of what has been top to bottom throughout the bag. Just really a strength his game. The last six starts for him on the PGA Tour. A couple of wins and a runner-up at the PGA Championship and still here with a chance to win back-to-back -back FedEx Cup playoff events. We go to Will Haskett. You know, the maturation of Dustin Johnson, when everybody reflects back on his career, we'll talk about the work he put in to become a better wedge player. We'll talk about the putting ups and downs, but how solid that club has become in the, I guess, the back half of his career. Maybe right at the middle point, if he can play and stay healthy through his mid to late 40s. But I think the maturation of the player-caddy combination of the two Johnson brothers and how Austin has become an integral part of the preparation and really helping the DJ on the greens to see the pathway and read for him. They have certainly done their homework on this 33-footer. 16th green completely bathed in shadows. This putt comes up a little bit of a rise. Everything I see should move this ball from right to left on its path. DJ strokes the birdie putt. It has crested the ridge. Now turning over left, it's going to miss to the left-hand side. And just not borrowed enough. That's one of the rare putts we've seen DJ miss uphill low. It's a couple of feet. He'll make it. He'll stay minus three with two to go. Yeah, he will. Hideki, on the other hand, 
you know, he's going to need a little more work just to save his par. He had a decent chip, but he's got some work left. A couple of holes to play. Members of our team are proud to wear apparel provided by Cutter & Buck, an official licensee of the PGA Tour, and a top premium branded supplier featuring all-weather apparel for active lifestyles, both on and off the course. To learn more and find a retailer near you, visit CutterBuck.com. You're listening to exclusive coverage of the BMW Championship, the penultimate event of the FedEx Cup playoffs from Olympia Fields Country Club in suburban Chicago, Illinois. And as we do at the top and bottom of every hour in our life play-by-play coverage, time now for a leaderboard update brought to you by MasterCard. Tap and go with your MasterCard, the simple, secure way to pay. John Rahm, four under leads by one. He's at 18, Tom Wormy. 134 yards to go from the right side of the fairway. Hole location's front right. A safe play by Rom. Directly left of that hole location, about 20, 25 feet away. High percentage play for Rom to get it on the surface in regulation after a tee ball of 366. A birdie roll. If it drops, Rom gets to minus five here at the last. Got the one shot lead. How do you get it done Sundays in the playoffs? You shoot the round of the week. Rom working on it. Six under through 17, four under in front by one over Dustin Johnson, who's three under, as he has just a few holes left to play, a couple of holes left to play now for DJ needing at least a birdie coming in. Tied for third, Joaquin Neiman, Hideki Matsuyama, still on the course, two shots back at two under. And Tony Finau played a great round today, 65. He's fifth by himself at minus one. Will? Hideki Matsuyama for yet another up and in after a missed green at 16. A must make at this juncture of the golf tournament. A little four and a half footer for Matsuyama. Strokes the putt. Good pace, but it's turning over left. Oh, but it turns over and catches the right side of the cup. Beautiful putt. Hideki Matsuyama may need a birdie birdie finish, but he's given himself a chance to try that at two under through 16. And Will, some of the moving out and moving in situations have really slowed down now. It looks to be pretty solid. Mackenzie Hughes is that guy on the golf course, still has a say if he can get there. He has moved from 36 to 28. Joaquin Neiman looks like he will be a part of it. He's currently tied for third, going from 31st to 18th. And the two players looking to be on the outside, that would be Adam Long moving from 27th to 31st, and Kevin Streelman going from 28th to 32nd. And the Corn Ferry Tour, the path to the PGA Tour in Newburgh, Indiana this weekend. The Corn Ferry Tour Championship presented by United Leasing and Finance, Victoria National Golf Club. Brandon Wu went low on Sunday, 7 under 65 to close it out. And Brandon Wu wins by one, 18 under par. Grayson Sig finished second at 17 under. Fred? Perfect drive for Joaquin Neiman at Two Rivers, the 444-yard Par for 17th hole, 151 in for Joaquin. Left-hand hole location, that's right of the flag stick. And that's in that 20-25 foot range. That's going to be a makeable birdie putt. Upcoming for Joaquin Neiman, trying to get it to three under par at the 17th. They mentioned Mackenzie Hughes. He is currently tied for eighth, and he's two shots clear right now. Nothing anybody else can really do about it on the golf course. He's got control of his own destiny, and that doesn't happen very often when you're trying to get these late. Yeah, no, and Joaquin Neiman, that great run, and at one point the leader today, he's the other one, as you mentioned, Dennis, uh, projected in. He was one outside the bubble, 31st to start the week. He's going to play his way in, and the man who was on the bubble looks like it's going to be enough to hang on for Billy Horschel, who projects 30th and the last man in by three points over Adam Long right now. I just think it had a lot to do with what Corey Connors did with that little three putt from five feet. He had a four footer or so for a par to save, and he ends up three putting that. They tied. He gets extra points, and that was really possibly the difference. John Rahm would be number two next week heading to Atlanta if he wins this, Tom Wormy. 25 feet for Birdie, left of the whole location on the right side of the green. For John Rahm, will this day belong to the Spaniard? Rom down in the crouch looking at the line, already working on the best round of the week at six under par for the day. This could take him to seven under. That'd be 63. Rom, 25 feet for Booty at the last, and five under par for the championship. One last look at the hole. Rom sends it on its way, slowly but surely. 
five feet away, continues to funnel down to the cup just off to the right. But very well done by John Rahm. It's just a tap in from a few inches away. It's the round of the week. John Rahm with the 64. Let's make it official from five inches away, and it's in the cup. So in the house at four under par, will the score from John Rahm on a Sunday outside of Chicago hold up at the BMW Championship? Never in my wildest dreams that I think someone's going to shoot 10 under par on the weekend, Earl. And if you do that, you deserve to win the golf tournament. We'll see if it's going to be enough, but that was a heck of a weekend. The only bogey made, you had to give him a penalty for a bogey on the weekend. Dustin Johnson needs at least a birdie coming in. Iron off the tee for DJ at 17, so he opts to put one in play. Pounds it up the left center of the fairway. Making sure he gets it in play. DJ needs one coming in to catch Rom. Yes, he does. That's the bottom line. He needs to make one birdie. He knows exactly what's going on. In fact, the 17th tee was just to the left of the green, and they were watching Rom hit his putt before he hit his tee ball there. So he knows exactly what he needs to do. So for DJ, he's going to be number one. He's going to have the lead at the Tour Championship. Rom would be second, and, you know, he'd start the week two back. But for DJ, really, win or lose today as far as next week is not going to change his standing as the man to beat beginning Friday. And Hideki hitting less than driver. That actually looked like a driving iron of some sort. He had a little low chaser at 17, and that is just fine in the fairway. He's got a little more work than his playing partner in Dustin Johnson. Hideki Matsuyama is going to need a pair of birdies here if he wants to be playing a little more golf this evening. You know, it's something John Rahm is who's in now, and with the lead at four under, Maybe about to do, become the first player from Spain to win in the FedEx Cup playoffs. Sergio Garcia does not have a playoff win. No one from Spain yet has won one. Rom trying to get that done today, Fred. Joaquin Neiman needs to play the last two holes in two under par. Whether that's birdie birdie or par eagle. Right now, birdie birdie is still a possibility. 26 feet for birdie at the 17th. Strokes the ball, rolling up, needs to turn, staying out on that left hand side a little more. Ah, oh, Paquito Mas, mi amigo. Hangs that right on the edge. He may take his time to walk up to this one. I mean, that baby is really overhanging the hole. Walks up, does not wait. And just maybe half an inch plops it into the cup. Joaquin Neiman goes to the 72nd hole of competition. Two under for the week, three under in today's round. Wow. I'm going to say three blades of grass, and that's only because one of the blades of grass was a little longer. That ball rocked, it looked like, Earl, as it came to the hole and just nestled back just a little bit. The kid had a chance to win today. What a great round of golf. To stay at minus three here at 17. Not the shot that DJ was looking for right there. Yeah, I agree with him. I think try to be a little more aggressive off the tee. At least bring the fairway bunker into play a little bit. I don't think he had to hit driver off the tee, but just a little more club to give him a, 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 an angle where he could access the whole access the whole location from a higher trajectory. But that's just too far out to try to get close with a cut. Now Matsuyama needs two birdies coming in. Will. From the left side of the fairway, Hideki Matsuyama needs a birdie birdie finish to match John Rahm in the clubhouse. Has to try and flirt with the bunker down the left hand side and spin it on a very firm green. Up the hill he sends this shot, coming down towards the green, just right of the hole, one hop, tries to put on the brakes, gathers towards the back right portion. He's gonna have to make a long one. It's outside of thirty feet for Birdie Matsuyama at seventeen. Yeah, he's going to have to make a long one, and then he's going to have to do it again on 18 with another birdie, but he's given himself at least an opportunity being on the green. He's actually very few times that he had a fairway and a green this whole week, Earl. <laughs> yeah, um, he's going to need to, and if he doesn't get that, he would need a hole out at 18. DJ has to get up and down now, otherwise he's two back with two to play, so the tournament is on the line here. The guy that's in. I mean, you just figured, and we knew this all week, that with the, the difficulty of making birdies, even on the easiest scoring day so far, the difficulty of these holes, if you need one or two coming in, they're tough to get. John Rahm, the big advantage with that lead and done. Yeah, and Dustin Johnson hasn't been the best out of bunkers. He's two for five. He's had some awkward ones, and this one is going to be a very long one, so it's not going to be a gimme by any means for DJ trying to get it up and down out of the sand. So he's got a chance at 18 to only have to make a birdie. Up at 18, uh, Joaquin Neiman, Mackenzie Hughes 
playing there. Hughes with the bogey at 17 means, according to projections, he has to par 18. With a par birdie at 18, he's in the play at the uh, Tour Championship. A bogey would drop him outside the top 30. So he knows what he has to do as well. Got to make a four at 18. Does he know that, it, that he knows that he has to do that? Hopefully he does. Hopefully there's some information up there. But, uh, wow, 